Greetings everyone, Robert Wayne Scott here, and today we're going to talk about transcranial direct current stimulation and whether or not using or doing such a thing will help me, and possibly you, become better guitar players. Before I get too carried away, I should mention that I'm not a doctor, this is not medical advice, I'm just sharing with you my own experience. So, a long time ago, I'm sitting in my car and I'm listening to NPR because that's what audio engineers do. We don't listen to music in our cars because that just makes us crazy because the car is not a proper listening environment for music. Uh, pretty much every audio engineer I know um, listens to talk radio in their car. So I'm listening to NPR because that's what's on and the news reporter's talking about something or other uh, that DARPA uh, is doing with uh, soldiers to train them to become snipers faster, some sort of hand-eye coordination gimmick that they're using. And uh, what it is, is they were um, basically running current through these soldiers' heads in certain positions, and by doing that, uh, they were able to achieve these amazing results. So let's see what that looks like. So basically you're going to take around two milliamps and you're just going to run it through your head and your brain being an electrical device, you give some stimulation to the part of the brain that, that needs it and voila, you've learned something that much faster. And I thought this was cool and I was all excited when I saw it because I'm like, well, cool. well I'll, I'll get one. But come to find out that the Food and Drug Administration had not approved such devices yet for sale here in the United States. So I did what any good um, engineer would do and I went on YouTube and I found someone that uh, basically had the schematics on how to build one of these devices. It's very simple to do, uh, link below. To that video and I, and I built one and then I very excitedly told my um, business partner about it and he said I was crazy and there's nothing I hate more uh, than uh, being called crazy so I built the device and um, I found uh, a montage and I should briefly tell you what those are. Montages are locations where you're going to put these electrodes that give you different results. There are montages for pain alleviation and depression and hand-eye coordination and if you uh, choose to go down that rabbit hole you can go online and there are um, papers and studies and all kinds of uh, different montages uh, that you can look into. So I found a montage uh, for gamers and um, I was already playing a game and had several thousand games under my belt, World of Tanks. I really like the game World of Tanks. It's an online game, typically 15 uh, people versus 15. And over a period of time, you, you know, you can get an idea of how good of a player you are. I wasn't very good. Uh, Notice the gray hairs and stuff. I mean, I've been a gamer you know, most of my life, but I mean, let's face it, you know, somebody with, you know, young eyes and, you know, a bit younger, you know, you know, athletes, athletes are typically younger. Somebody with better hand-eye coordination is just going to stop me. And that was the truth. I wasn't a very good player, um, but I started uh, charting my uh, progress as soon as I started wearing the device. I'd wear it for about 20 minutes a day while playing World of Tanks. And as you can see from um, the charts, my I started making some uh, dramatic improvements in, uh, in, in what I was doing and in the game. And as a matter of fact, uh, within a period of six months, I was able to uh, take my little Valentine anti-tank uh, destroyer, my tank destroyer, and become the best player in the world. That little one there above the tank uh, denotes my my position. And that just wasn't one game. Like I got lucky and won one game. I had to stomp on people uh, consistently for an entire month 
uh, to get that rating. And then one of the other tanks I played, I'm, I'm, I'm in the top 50. But I thought, you know, that's a pretty serious uh, improvement, uh, you know, over what I did. And, and to me, it proved that, uh, you know, that this device had some merit. And then uh, once proving to everyone I, I wasn't crazy, I just kind of sat the thing to the side and I haven't really given it a lot of thought since. Uh, a lot of thought until now. Now believe it or not, as I said, I'm a bit of an older guy. And, uh, and you know, even though I don't do it professionally anymore, I, I really love uh, playing guitar and I'm kind of bummed out that I can't play guitar like I used to. And even worse than that, as I use OBS Studio to get the next scene in, because I don't like editing. I try to do as much of this live as I possibly can. Otherwise, I just won't do it. Um, but, you know, to make matters worse, apart from, you know, being a bit old, I've really just abused my hands. Uh, this hand, I might as well have just shoved into a, a wood chipper. I've done some... Uh, very serious and permanent damage to it just by being dumb. Uh, you know, it doesn't function the way it used to. Uh, I have arthritis in this hand, um, you know, and that makes things difficult. And, and to add insult really to injury, you know, for the last uh, 30 years, I've really just had one go-to guitar, and that's uh, a custom-built Explorer um, that I had made. Uh, it's Warmoth. Uh, back in 1990. It's 30 years old. And at the time, because, you know, the, there is an internet and I wasn't sure what I was ordering because I was outside of the country, you know, they just give you a little form like, well, what do you want? And I mean, I just ordered all kinds of ridiculous stuff. It's a um, reverse headstock explorer, but with a Gibbs, I'm sorry, a fender scale length. Um, the neck is just stupid, ridiculously wide. Everything about it just makes for difficult playing. And on top of that, uh, I, I, I liked really top heavy strings. I played with 12s, you know, that, that's what I did. <laughs> so, um, you know, that was my guitar, really my, my go-to guitar until uh, quite recently. And, and I can't play it anymore. It's, it's you know, it's like playing a, a telephone pole or something. It's, it's a very difficult thing to play uh, because my hands aren't working properly. So I've, uh, I've really switched things up uh, to, 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 to try to make stuff work for me. You know, I'm using, uh, as you can see here, an extremely light guitar, um, you know, a, a Gibson scale length nines these aren't 12s now you know i've got nines on here they just feel so loose it is really difficult for me to get any kind of speed on this i'm holding my pick different uh, than i used to i used to kind of hold it like i don't know maybe you were gripping a sword or something but now it it just you know i hold it so delicately and i have to hold my hand differently and this is a much different neck. You can see I've got another SG um, behind me over there. And, and and it seems to be working, but I don't really have a lot of speed. And uh, you know what? We could probably do a, a quick before and after. Um, you know, here's some recordings from, well, from a long time ago. Just I'll montage it together, give you an idea of... Uh, what I like to do.
just to kind of show you where I'm at, I will, uh, you know what, I'll have to pause this a minute. I'll noodle around and give you an idea of what's happening there. So now that you've heard me noodling around a bit and playing like a tired old man, what can I do to test myself and see if using the device helps me over time? Well, I have an answer. I've thought about three sort of little tongue twister things that I could play on the guitar um, that really sort of force me to use my hands in ways that I'm just not comfortable with anymore. And I'll do it to a metronome and then I'm going to film it over a course of, I don't know, maybe six weeks, maybe that's enough time, and see if it makes any difference. And I mean, I'm not ashamed, I'm not, I'm, A, I don't like editing. Uh, I tend to just leave my mistakes, whether they're verbal or um, just a complete uh, loss of uh, my train of thought or my actual playing, I tend to leave those in so I'm not embarrassed. Um, you know, we're here to see if I can actually improve myself. So if I were to play, say a couple of things, what would I do? Well, here's one that I think is a bit of a, uh, a twister that I'd like to uh, uh, put to a metronome and then see if I can um, play it and play it faster and play it without mistakes. Um... <laughs> As you can see, I struggle with that. You know, I struggle with uh, uh, with the speed on that. I always feel a little uncomfortable leaning back. So that's one. Another one I'd like to try would be... Um, See, that's that's just sloppy as hell so lots of room for an improvement there uh, what else <laughs> So anyways, those are the things that I'm going to try to play that... Yeah. Those three things, actually see if I can play it right, play it in tune, and, uh, and not make mistakes, and, and uh, test it with a metronome. I'll just play at the slowest speed possible where I don't make mistakes, and that should be able to uh, see where we end up, and then we can find out is the transcranial direct current stimulation, is it as useful for guitar as it is for, uh, for games? And, and just in case you're wondering, I'm actually gonna use a montage, we talked about those earlier. Um, uh, if I remember right, it's going to be uh, cathode anode, but it's, uh, it's a montage 
that they use on people that have had a stroke that have to relearn um, uh, their, their fine motor skills. So I, it's kind of the same. I kind of have to relearn some fine motor skills. So I'm going to use the same montage um, that they use, which will be a, uh, an electrode here, an electrode here, two milliamps going through my head. And then over a period of time, we can see if I can actually get my crappy plane uh, made better. Because, you know, it's a, it's, you know, these days it's a hobby I absolutely love. And it, and it pains me to no end that I, I play like crap. So... Uh, I guess here in about another six weeks we'll have part two uh, out and, and we'll be able to see whether or not I've had any success. So thank you for tuning in and I'm, I'm excited to see what happens.